Hey folks, how's everybody doing today? Happy Thursday, hope you're doing well. Alright, look at that, we got like three songs in a row without a Spotify ad, how cool is that? Alright, so we've got a couple things on tap tonight. Thirsty Thursday, hydration, yeah! Thanks Sean, I've actually got a, my glass of milk here. I just finished scarfing down a little pot pie uh, because time got away from me. And I didn't realize that it was 6 o'clock already. <laughs> um, so it's been one of those days. Alright, so we're going to work on chapters 5, 6, and 7. Milk was a bad choice. Is that a quote from something? Milk's never a bad choice. Milk is amazing. Although, it is a little weird that we as mammals drink a different mammal's milk. Just, just going to put that out there, but... Sure. I mean, it's fortified with vitamin A and D. It's good for us, right? Full of calcium. Good for your bones. <laughs> us from Anchorman. Uh, man, is that, that movie's old, right? I'm not just making it up. Right? Because I feel like I saw that years ago. Okay, that's what I thought. Super old. Oh, thanks, thanks for making me feel old now forever. Uh, <laughs> sure. All right. Uh, so the model view controller design and a way of laying out our code here in PHP. Um, how to debug. Finally, I don't know why this is so late in the book, but um, sure. And then uh, a little more working with forms. 2004. I mean, 17 years ago. So the movie's old enough to drive and get a driver's license, but it's not old enough to drink yet. All right. How's everything going with Project 2? Um, any questions, thoughts, concerns on that one before we get into new material? Again, I've got the starter code out there for you, right? I did all of the course stuff. So you've got examples from course. Um, again, the, the idea is, again, um, I'll say again, like again and again, maybe you should ban that real in real life word. Um, but I know there was no prereq for doing HTML. I know there was no prereq for doing databases. So the kind of the, the idea here is I'm going to build something and show you and then give it to you and say, okay, you do the rest rather than what I would typically do in a class is build something and say you build something completely different using the same set of tools. Um, so I want to have something that is very easy for you to kind of model off of. Like, okay, here's how I do all my HTML. Sure, here's how I do this. Um, I got my database. We just need to tweak some of these things here. Um, so that's that's the idea for these first couple projects. Uh, the final project is a whole different story, okay? But the, the first uh, one, two, and three here, excuse me, we'll be going through and kind of following along with this college registration example, okay? Uh, project 4 will be switching over to JSP, and then the final project, you can actually use whichever you prefer, PHP or JSP. Um, they, they both work, uh, so we're just looking at uh, different web technologies, uh, which is kind of fun that we, we have them both here in the course. It's a, a little weird sometimes, because uh, we do a lot of the same things, but that's okay. It's no big deal. All right, um, any other thoughts on project 2? Um, I do not have Project 1 graded. I apologize. Um, I planned poorly um, because I have four classes this summer and all of them have a project every two weeks. So I now have like 75... No, uh, they, they turned theirs into... So I have 100... About 100 projects to grade that all showed up. <laughs> um, so I am not caught up yet. I apologize. I'll be working on that. I should have it in by the end of the weekend. It's the goal to get all this stuff graded for Project 1. So apologies, um, should have it by the end of the weekend for you. And then don't forget, we do have some quizzes. I think I finally posted these ones here for you. The Chapter 3 quiz and the Chapter 4 quiz. Um, tonight, 11.59 p.m., if possible. If that's terrible and you're upset that you have to do two in a row, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to be a little bit flexible with you. Um, but again, the, the quizzes are kind of your incentive to go read the book. Right? 
because the, the book is the main reference source here. I'm trying to pull out the highlights, trying to give you more examples, go through other things. Because um, anyone could just go buy the book. Cool. Thanks, Soulstar. Yeah, so it looks like a lot of people got them here, but not everybody. So we're about halfway here uh, in terms of getting those quizzes in. Well, that, that's how many I've graded. So zero out of 16 is I've graded zero of them. I also have to grade all these quizzes as they come in, too. Yep. Um, and then we'll have a quiz um, for chapters 5, 6, and 7. Um, it's not always one chapter at a time, but I try to do it every week is the goal. Um, we did not have a quiz for the earlier PHP material. I totally forgot about it with the power outage. Um, apologies. But I'll, I'll, we'll have um, like maybe a end of PHP quiz once we finish up some of that other content. We'll have another one to, to make sure you feel prepared for the midterm. Right, so we'll finish up PHP essentially uh, on 624 or so. So by the end of June, we'll be done in PHP. We'll get into JSP. We'll spend a couple weeks in JSP, and then we'll get to the midterm. Look at some more advanced JSP stuff. The EL and JSTL are fantastic. Um, look at using JDBC. That's our Java database connection. All right, yeah, if you're confused about the question, let me know. Um, you are more than welcome to, like, ask clarification questions. Um, I, I'm, you know, happy to answer those. Uh, I try and write all the quiz questions myself. I don't, I'm not a fan of quiz banks at all. Um, so they're typically written by me, and that means they could also have typos. <laughs> um, I, I try my best to do the proofreading, but I, I've messed them up before. So that's, that's definitely a possibility. And if you're not sure exactly what the question means, you know, please ask in the Discord, and I'll clarify what, what I was kind of intending the question to, to mean. Or And, you know, just like we we're in person, I'd be able to shout it out to the class taking it. So, um, yeah, take your questions to Discord. Um, it's definitely a good place to do it. Or send me an email, text me, call me. That's all good. So is everything clear for Project 2 here then before we move on? I mean, I can even open it right now, actually. Here, let's do that. Um, I can do that. I think I can do that. Said it was the Chapter 2 quiz? Or the Chapter... Oh, goodness. The first question on the second quiz. So, probably the Chapter 4 quiz. I can open it up. Oh, the Chapter 3 quiz. Okay, I'm sorry. We'll go back. Exit the preview. Preview this one. The first question. Designing a database table is similar to designing classes and object-oriented programming. Now, now, I'm going to give up. Uh, nouns are typically the table with the attributes being the column. An entry in the table is an instance of the table. So kind of how we, we would design an object-oriented programming, your, your classes are typically the nouns. And our classes will have attributes. They'll have all those private instance fields as their attributes. right? And an instance of the class represents this is one of those nouns. Uh, so similar with designing a database table, right? But typically they're nouns. Again, it's not a hard and fast rule, but typically they're a noun, and all of their attributes are, are the columns. So when you have a row in the table, like an entry in the table that has, here, I filled out all of these columns here. Here's one row, that's an entry. That's essentially like an instance that, that's one of these things. So when we talk about the course table, right? A entry in the table has the course number, has the course department, has the number of credits that it is, has a, a name, those sort of things. So it's essentially an instance of course. Does that make sense? All right, I finished the milk. I'm switching over to Lime Perrier. Thank you, Amazon Subscribe and Safe. And no, I don't get a referral code. <laughs> uh, depends on what you changed it to, Soulstar. If you changed it to something that still makes sense, yeah. Like the 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 name of the table, or the, you know, the, the table. This is the course table. So the course is the noun. And you'll have many courses, many instances of course. Um, yeah, probably not data. Uh, I don't, 
don't think data quite fits, fits there. You put data in the table, right? You'll populate these entries with data. Again, that, that, that's another discussion for like the, the database class as well, talking about what is data, what is information, um, that sort of thing. That's always a fun discussion to have. It was like 42 is data. It's, it's kind of meaningless though without context, right? It's not information until you know what that 42 is representing. All right, awesome. So one one more, quick, more quick review. I think uh, Mark and one you folks said you're good, but just real fast. Um, so, right, start with mine or write it yourself, whatever's fine. So we're going to add functionality for student, section, and enrollment. Okay, so I did the CRUD operations, the create, read, update, and delete operations for course. And we're just going to add more pages for student, right, along with that shared navigation page. Right. Our index page links out to the main management page for each course. And we're going to have a navigation header that's included. That header, like the, you know, the, the little bar at the top, I think I even filled out the first one for you, where we can include these pages in the other pages. Right. The idea is we don't want to have to do the same thing twice. Like any good programmer, we're going to be if lazy, efficiently lazy. Right. We're only going to do one thing once. Sorry, probably put my phone on quiet here. There, got that figured out. Cool. Uh, and we did finally get official word from our administration that following Michigan Occupational Health and Safety, something or other, my OSHA guidelines, we're going to start slowly opening the campus back up over the summer. Um, classes will remain remote. Um, but student services will start opening up sometime around July 5th or so in a phased approach. So look forward to that if uh, there's things you need on campus. Um, I think they're still going to offer the remote options, but I don't know that for sure, like for student services and you know appointments and whatnot. Uh, but more information is coming, and we're looking towards fall already. Whew, that should be fun. Um, likely in-person classes. Um, assuming we can be close enough together. Okay. All right, awesome. So let me fire up uh, NetBeans here. All right, close these ones down. Nope. Close projects, there we go. And then I'm actually going to open up our college registration project. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep working with this one. Uh, we're just going to keep modifying it as we go. Okay, cool. I'm glad uh, the email went out. Yeah, I think that is the the guidelines uh, for vaccinated individuals indoors. Our latest and greatest health guidelines say masks are not required. Okay. Um, actually, is it going to... If you folks haven't started this yet, I don't want it to mess you up. So let me, let me do this. Let me just make a copy of this one, actually. Um, I'll do it that way. I don't need any of that one. Let's do 24.54 for summer. Except for Party City. Sorry, what now? All right, so I'm gonna just make a copy here. This will be college registration um, MVC. Okay, 
And then I'm going to open that one. So I'll leave this one as is for you folks to model off of, because if I go change it now, I don't want that to be confusing. Excuse me. 2454. Summer. There's college registration. MVC. There we go. And I'm going to rename this to MVC. Okay. And let me just change where we're deploying here then too. So I'm going to add it to the MVC folder. So I've got a new version here. Uh, yeah, so a, a lot of uh, a lot of businesses are still requiring masks because um, we just don't trust people. <laughs> uh, just let's just be honest. So um, yeah, a lot of businesses are still it, it's up to them, but there's no mandate. Uh, but if the business wants to do that, they're they're allowed to to ask for required masks, um, especially because as of like last Friday, I don't know what our current rate is. We're only at like. 66% vaccination rate. So that's like one in three people are not vaccinated. So that's still a relatively high rate, I suppose. Um, even if we can get up higher and higher, um, you know, if we, if we get to 75%, that's one in four are not vaccinated. So, uh, you know, if we show up to campus and got a class full of students with 30 people and no one has a mask on, I'm not going to believe it. Um, you know, that's just, that's just statistics, right? It did not make you magnetized. That is so sad. I was so excited to to have this power to magnetize things to myself. How cool would that have been? Right? Sorry, Sean. We, we missed out on that, too. What do I have? I can stick to myself. My fork? Nope. Nothing. Nothing. What a bummer. But, you know... People saw it on YouTube, so it must be true. I'm, I'm sure you saw it on YouTube. Got to be true. Okay. And then I just need to change this page as well. So the source where I'm going, so the folder here becomes the path that you're finding on your server. Right? And then let me fire up uh, XAMPP. There we go. You know, we, we make fun of other states for having crazy people at their state hearings. Um, but we also did have some pretty crazy claims in our state hearing uh, relatively recently. So, the other 50% that doesn't will get vaxxed by shedding. Like, they'll build up some immunity? Oh, oh with the shed. Okay. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, that's That's how it works, right? Oh, come on. My patch is not working? That's not cool. Wow, what is running? This is what I get for not rebooting before class. There's no Apache. Alright, let's look at the logs. Ugh. Okay, July... You know, June 3rd is the latest in the log. That doesn't look right. HP error log? Nothing. Access log? No. Is there anything in logs? Nothing. So it just doesn't want to start because it's cranky. Oh, goodness. That's not how it's supposed to go, folks. Usually a reboot takes care of it. Uh, but if I reboot, the stream goes away. So I was going to try and not reboot. Is that fair? Just uninstall and reinstall? Ugh, I'm sorry. That is, that's no fun. Come on, that log. It would be really sad if I can't actually, like, deploy anything. <laughs> it's no fun. 
Oh, stop responding. There we go. Uh, MariaDB is upset. That should be. That looks unhappy. Nothing from Apache, though, right? That's the only thing. All MariaDB. Yeah, nothing from Apache. That looks fine. Nope, nothing. All right, let's go the other way. So here we are going to go look at the log files here. That's what you get for being proactive working on a project before the day before it's due. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's always fun, right? So I think we have, yeah, Apache start is what runs here. So let me go try and launch this myself here. So what XAMPP does is it runs the start to start it. So let's go see if we can take a peek here. So we have the XAMPP folder, and then we want to run Apache start.bat, see what it does. Can't bind 50,080. Hey, we're back. Maybe? Oh, geez. It just dropped and reconnected here. Hey, folks. Sorry about that. Yeah, it looks like it just totally dropped the stream and reconnected. Uh. Don't mind the address. That sounds unfortunate. Just for fun, I want to try 50,081. Nope. Of course. One more try, running it as administrator, and then I might just need to reboot in a minute. So we can do some of the MVC stuff, I just can't hit deploy till I reboot, so maybe at break I'll reboot. One more time, I'm just going to try it logged in as an administrator. Uh, XAMPP. That was an Apache start, right? Nope. And that doesn't work either. Look at that is German. Alright, yeah, my Apache is set. I think a reboot will take care of it. It usually does. But it's just not, not being useful right now. Yeah. All right. I will reboot after. Sorry, folks. And then I'll figure out, I'll make sure it'll deploy. But here we go. <laughs> the stream doesn't like me playing around in PowerShell. Maybe. Who knows? Uh, so this index page, right, was just a main base index page. And then we went to this course index. It hiccups every time I open up a terminal. I wonder if it's just loading behind the scenes. All right, so the way we've been doing things so far is it works, uh, but it's not uh, a very super flexible design. Right? This idea that we have this course page, right? And then it would take you to different pages based on what we were trying to do. So we had a form that would take you to add a course, and then add course would go and add a course, and then it would have nothing else there. There's nothing else on the page, so it would add it, and then we would go include the course index back again. So like we're, we're doing all this thing and then we're coming back to course index already just to show you the course index page again. But then your URL doesn't change. I think you saw we would be on the add course.php page, but we would have essentially have loaded 
everything from course index and that's what you'd be seeing um, so what we do is we use this other model here let me get up the uh, whiteboard there we go excuse me and what happens right we have our little computer over here that sends a request out to the web server Right, and here is our Apache server. It gets the request and it's going to do something. Right, so if we say, hey, I want the index.php page. Right, so Apache is going to grab that page, do all the things on index, send the response back. Right, that's what we've been doing so far. But what we want to do now is we want to try and separate out and kind of break up some of these, um, the different pieces that happen. So we're going to have a controller. The controller's job is to take the request. So the request will be handled by the controller. The controller's job is to say, hey, what are you trying to do here? Gather any data it needs. And then it's going to send the request or, or ask us to do some processing. Right? All the, the essentially the, the hard code stuff is going to be done in what we're going to call the model. Right? So the request goes to the controller. The controller asks the model to do stuff. Do stuff. Right? The model is essentially where all of our code goes. This is all of our PHP code. Okay? The model sends back the response, or sends back whatever stuff we asked it to do. Right? Essentially, we'll, we'll send back a bunch of data. So in our case, hey, we do, give me a list of courses. We'll ask the model for a list of courses. That'll come back to the controller. And then the controller will send out data to what we'll call the view. The view is basically HTML, right? With our fancy, um, probably a capital T there, right? HTML. It's our fancy PHP HTML. So we can, we can echo things out, but the view doesn't do any of the model stuff. Okay. Wow, that's awesome. We got like five in a row. Okay, there we go. <laughs> yeah, five five spammers in a row. That's fun. does does anybody actually click on those? Like, does that seriously work? <laughs> if you come to someone's channel and spam, hey. Come buy some followers, get famous. Like, uh, that can't actually work. I, I don't know. I say the same thing about those stupid phishing emails, and apparently they take lots of people's money. That's <laughs> how the Kardashians did it. <laughs> uh, sure. So we the controller gets the request sends it over to the model to do some stuff right and it calls the correct model so you were going to have lots of different models here right or the model will do be able to do lots of different things we, the model sends back the data we send the data to the view and then the view sends back to the controller which then gets sent back to the request right so step one request comes into the controller step two model step three data comes back to controller step four send it to the view step five view sends it to the controller Step six, controller sends it back. So it's going to take a couple more steps, but we're going to see it lets us build uh, things a lot more modularly, which is going to make it easier to kind of plug and play and take little pieces and, and grab them here and there. So we don't have to do all of this uh, like we did in here, where we're just going to include the entire ad course. Right? Or the entire course index every time. Okay, that's sort of the idea. Okay, so let's try that. So we're going to take our course page, and actually, want I want to rename this one here, um, just 
because I think it's going to be cleaner. Let's just rename it to course. Okay, so all of these then we'll just post to course here. So course is going to be our controller. Okay, so then we're going to add a folder here for views. And we're going to add a folder in here for models. Just again, just to try and keep things a little bit organized here. So what we're going to do, we're going to add a PHP file here. This is our course model. Sure, why not? And what we can do in here then is we can add all of the code to do all of the course things that we need. Right? So it's going to require, uh, we can pretty much grab all of this actually. But we don't want to include here. We just do this if statement. So when a request comes into course then, if we want to add a course, what we're going to do, instead of sending them to add course, we're still just going to send them to course.php, which is our controller, and then we're going to add a hidden option here. Add a little hidden input. And we're just going to say, hey, this is the action I want to take. All right, so let me grab that one. There we go. So we need to check to see what our action is to decide what we're going to do. And then all of this is actually going to get pulled out into a separate view as well. We're going to pull all of this out and then we're going to add a view for course view. Nope. Uh, what did I do there? That was weird. Course view. Okay. So, you know, actually, let me rename this one. Let's call it, eh, I don't need to call it controller. That's okay. So we need to find out what our action is. Okay, what is, what is the user trying to do here? So input post will look for action. And then we're going to say, hey, if my action is equal to nothing here, right, or if it equals null, right, that, that special null keyword here, then I want to go through and see, okay, hey, if I didn't get it from get, let's see if we can get it from post. Because this controller is going to handle both get requests and post requests. Okay, and then one more check here. So then... If my action is null again, then we'll say action equals, uh, this is what, just list courses, maybe? How about list courses? So this is a little check here to say, hey, did they send me an action in the git? If they did, great. If they didn't, okay, look in the post. If it's not in the post, it must be list by default. So to list courses then, Right. This is actually the default option when we go to, to list out our courses. So this will be the list courses that happens here. We want to list them all. Okay, uh, here back in our model, I'm sorry, we, we want to try and separate these a little bit better here. We're going to break these out into functions. So a function will do a certain thing. So we'll have a function, and we're going to call it, oh, this is what, I don't know, um, add course. To add a course, you need to give it a department. You need to give it a number. Number. You need to give it a name, and you need to give it credits. So we don't need to get it out of the post request here. We're just going to say, hey, you can call this function from here.
Why is it mad at me? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Function. There we go. Sticks. Thanks. Uh, five bonus points for pointing out my typo. Thank you. Yeah, the main page is the controller. And then the model is all of our code bits are going to go to the model. And the view is all the HTML bits that are going to go into separate locations. Yep. We're just kind of trying to break things out a little bit to kind of organize things better. And this model view controller style design is, is very popular. We're going to see this lots of places. Not everybody does it. Uh, but it's a very popular way to kind of break things out and separate your concerns. Right? The idea you don't want one giant page that does everything. Because it's going to get confusing. And then especially if multiple people are working on a project, um, the more people who touch the same page, the harder it is to like get all of your changes in sync. So this way, hey, if I'm only changing how it looks, I'm changing the view. If I'm changing, um, you know, if I'm adding a new option, sure. Um, I add maybe something to a model, some a controller. I just kind of break some of these things out. Okay, so we're gonna have our function here. There we go. To add a course, and we're just gonna make sure that yes, we're have good options, and then we'll go and add the course. Uh, but what it needs is it needs that database variable, um, and to get it, it's actually a global variable. You say global db. Uh, where did it go here? Dollar dollar sign db. It says, hey, give me the global database variable here then i can go use it so we don't even need to add the require in here because we're requiring it in our controller which is then going to go use the model okay it just means we need to pass it the parameters okay so we had departments um this was our course controller. Okay, so we're looking to see what do we have here. So we want to, this was our list courses here. When I was at a course, we want to add a function for list courses. Function list courses here, and then list courses. We would either take a department or no department, right? So. Uh, maybe we've got some different options here. Grab all that. And here, you know, we'll, we'll add department here. Again, we'll do this global DB thing. So we need the global database variable. Go we'll write some queries. And then we can check, hey, if our department's blank, right, then select them all. Great. Otherwise, do that. And we're going to set courses, and we're going to close the cursor. Okay, so we can call that function here then, depending on what department is, right? So for listing courses, right, we can say, hey, if my action is equal to list courses, I want to call that list courses. Right, so I'll say, oh, I gotta add that, that's right, I'm sorry. I'm gonna return that. My course model needs to return, after I've closed, return courses. So unlike Java, you don't have to declare a return type, you just either return something or you don't. PHP is a little funny like that. So add course returns nothing. It just does a thing. List courses will return this course's variable. Okay, so then in course, then if my action was list courses, I can say courses equals, and I'll call that function. It was list courses given the department. Okay, if my action, right, so else if my action was to add a course, right, 
Then I want to go through and I want to get all of that input I had here for add course. Let me get all these here. And we'll come to my controller. All right, the controller's job is going to get all my variables here, and then it can call the function. And we'll call add course, given the department, given the number, oops, number, given the name, and given the credits. So it'll go and add the course right, using that add course model. Then when we're done, what we want to do is we want to go back to this course controller. So I'm not going to include myself, but I want to re like go back here. So we're going to send it, do the add course, and then we're going to go back and we want to get our default list courses action happening here. So um, instead of an include, this is called a header. So you say, hey, we're going to give them a redirect header. We're going to say, hey, go to a location of just dot. That should take us back to where we were. So it's the same page. And if you wanted to, we could add in additional information. Like we could list out a particular course if we wanted to, uh, if we had certain filters. But I think we'll be okay for right now. This is the current directory. Right, dot dot would go up a directory. You could go to a specific page. You can take them lots of different places. Okay, so we can add a course there. So now I don't need to have this own page that includes an index page. I, the idea is my controller says, oh, what do you want to do? Let me get your action. Okay, clean this up too. Right, we'll get your action. And then based on what that action is, it will do certain things. So let me put department in here then too. Okay, and then we'll just add more. So else if my action is equal to delete course, Right, let's take a look at our delete course page. So it needs an ID number, so we'll go to our course model, add another function. It says delete course, given an ID. We need the global database object. And then we'll check. Hey, if my, that ID is not a zero, we're going to try and delete from course where the ID is ID. We're going to bind that value. We're going to execute, close the cursor, and then we don't need to include anything. Uh, dollar DB, there we go. We can delete. So in the course controller, if the action was delete course, let's go get the value for course ID. We have that here. Right, make sure it's an integer. And then we'll call delete course, given the ID. Then we're just going to bounce them back. We're going to header back to the main page, the, the controller page, which by default will give me list. Okay, so we had delete. Now we need update. So update needs all of these things. Uh, well, let's grab the function here first, right? We'll go to our model. We want to update a course. Function update course given all of these things, so we have all of these ones plus an ID, right? We have dollar ID, department number, name, credits. Update the course, where the ID is the ID, repairs it, runs it, great. Uh, along with that global DB. Global database. Okay, so then let's grab our variables here that we needed. All of our input. We'll come back to course. Okay, else, if the action is to update course, get all of those and then call update course. Given the ID, department, the number, the name, and the credits. And then we'll head her, head her back to the index page. So it probably doesn't feel like any less work right now with the way we're breaking all these up, but that's okay. 
But now what we can do, though, we can get rid of delete course. Get rid of add course. Can I say delete? There we go. We can delete update course. Okay, and really this database kind of can go in our models as well. That's the database model. So let's add a new our database model. Okay, and all of our database model stuff can go in here. Well, database. But now we need to, when we require, it's slash uh, models slash database PHP, I think. That ought to do it. And then the database error is really a view. We're going to put that one in views. Views slash database error. I think it's that way. Uh, might be two dots to go up a directory because we're in models right now. Yeah, the dot in the include statement. So dot should be the current directory. Oh no, dot, so dot slash is going to go down one, isn't it? Um, I'm not sure it'll actually go beyond htdocs. It might. Huh. Um, I don't know. I've never tried. It's a good question one. We, we could try it and see for sure. Um, and navigation is also really just a, a view as well. And then this was just a course page now, right? That was course. Here, so we're going to put navigation in the views. So then course, uh, the course view can include navigation PHP. It should be at the same level there. So that should be okay. Let's see, I can't actually run deploy at the moment and try it. <laughs> uh, so it might be really broken here. But our main index page, uh, well, that should be then views slash navigation. I think it's, maybe it's not dot views, maybe it's just slash views. All right, we'll try it and see. We'll, we'll try these different ones, and uh, it might just crash hard on us, and we'll find out. Okay. So I apologize. Uh, my Apache is upset with me at the moment. So I'm going to do a quick reboot instead of a break, and then I'll be come back in about 10 minutes or so, um, 7.05. I'll try if I'll, I'll reboot, bring the stream back early uh, just for music, but then we'll plan to come back about or 706 now. Okay, so we'll do that. I, I have to hit end, um, so there'll be two different recordings, but that's fine. Like part one, part two, no big deal. All right, we'll go from there. All right, folks, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, wish me luck with the reboot, right? <laughs> All right, see you in a minute.